Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum. May Allah's peace, mercy, blessings be upon you. Alhamdulillah, we are going again with the same wonderful chapter from the Quran, the chapter of Al-Duha, the chapter of the morning hour. And Allah Almighty said, as we mentioned in the last episode, وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًّا فَهَدَى That he found you completely lost and he guided you. Means Allah Almighty found Muhammad, peace be upon him, lost, completely lost within the community that he is living in. So he is living with this Meccan society where the people worshipping idols. The slavery is going on. People buying and selling the slaves. People are oppressing. People are literally burying the daughters while they are born. So the society was completely corrupted. But yet Allah Almighty didn't make Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, get any influence by these people. So Allah Almighty said, yes, you was in lost in this com community and society and within those people, but Allah Almighty Fahada guided you. So his heart was guided. His soul was guided. He was guided. He never ever worshipped an idol. He never ever drank alcohol. He never ever dealt with the slaves or, or captive or, or took a slave or anything like that. He never ever did anything wrong in his life. He was completely protected from Allah Almighty or by Allah Almighty. He was completely isolated from all these bad things. In fact, he used to go to Ghar Hira, the, one of the mountains, and he used to go inside that cave and he used to sit and look at the skies and ponder upon the stars and the galaxies and the things that he's seeing, the clouds and everything. And he used to think about Allah Almighty. So the fitrah that the clean soul and the clean nafs that Allah Almighty gave every one of us, and we spoke about it in the last few episodes, Allah Almighty protected that nafs or that fitrah of Muhammad, peace be upon him. So, and then Allah Almighty said after that, وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا فَأَغْنَى That Allah Almighty found you poor and made you self-sufficient. And this is the message for, for Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And this is the message for all of us. That how many times you are literally poor, you don't know what to do. But Allah Almighty gave some of us this self-sufficient the self-richness, the richness of the soul. So you are protected by Allah Almighty. So Allah Almighty is saying in the same ayah, وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا فَأَغْنَى Allah found you. He found you poor. But He made you self-sufficient. And also this reminds me about the hadith of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that talks about the richness a Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said in a hadith, لَيْسَ الْغِنَى عَنْ كَثْرَةِ الْعَرْضِ That the richness is not having wealth and properties and I possess this and that. No. الْغِنَى غِنَى nafs. The richness is the richness of the heart. The richness is the richness of the soul. So this is what we want from Allah Almighty. How many times you witness by yourself and we witness that we have these people, we know these rich people, the multimillionaires and those Allah that gave them a lot of wealth, yet they are looking for money, yet they are looking for more houses, yet they want to buy more cars and more and more and they are never satisfied. That's amazing. And you will find at the same time poor person who is barely having two times meal to eat, but he is self-sufficient. He is eating and he says, Alhamdulillah, I'm happy that I'm eating. Look at the difference between these two people. Insha'Allah ta'ala, we will continue after the short break with the same ayat, with the same verses. So stay with us.
Dear viewers, welcome back. So, we spoke about that Allah Almighty found you, O Muhammad, and all of us poor, and He made you rich. And I mentioned before the break about the hadith of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that he said the richness is not the richness of having wealth and property and, and, and. No, the real richness is the richness of the heart, the richness of the soul. That you are rich, you don't need anything. And I gave you this example that a person is having houses and villas and maybe, you know, a lot of business and cars and planes and helicopters and all these things and having even castle. But yet he is not satisfied. I want more. Why that other person having five million and I have only four million? Ajeeb. <laughs> That's strange. That he is thinking about this millions that other person is having, maybe one or two million extra, and he is crazy. He's not sleeping in the night. Why? Because he does not have the self-sufficient. There is no richness in his heart. There is no richness in his soul. And from the other side, a poor person may be sleeping on the floor, but he's saying, Alhamdulillah. He's having a big smile on his face. He's eating maybe a bread, or it could be that dry bread, but yet he is saying, Alhamdulillah, oh Allah, I thank you. I'm happy, Allahu Akbar. Look at the self-richness, the self-sufficient that Allah Almighty put in his heart. This is what we want, my brothers and sisters. And then Allah Almighty said, فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ So, as far the orphan, do not oppress. Yes, if you see any orphan, if you see anyone who does not have a father or a mother or both of them, do not oppress. Do not make him feel bad. Do not say, yeah, leave, leave. I don't care about you if he comes for some support, if he comes to ask you something. So do not reject them. And Allah Almighty said after, وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرْ And as for the poor person, do not repel, do not reject him. If anyone comes to you asking for anything, either asking for money or asking for help or asking for anything or asking for an advice, do not make yourself that you are the rich person and you don't need anyone and you can reject anyone and you can reject any person that you want. Never. Allah Almighty says, About the orphan, do not make this yatim, this orphan, to feel bad. Do not repel. And do not reject the one who's coming with a question and asking you for something. And at the end, Allah Almighty said, And of the favor of Allah Almighty on you, talk, tell people. And this is the problem that when Allah Almighty gives someone wealth and health and everything, and especially when it comes to the wealth, they don't care. They are just trying to fill their bank balance. They are trying to fill their, you know, custody. And they are trying to fill their drawers with this money and wealth and everything. And they are not showing the blessings of Allah, the favor of Allah upon them. You will find this person, he is super rich. He is rich, but yet his clothes are dirty. Yet he is wearing something old, torn, or something like that. And Allah Almighty says, Talk. Tell people about the ni'mah that Allah Almighty gave you. Not necessarily that you have to tell them how much, or what is your balance in the you know, statement. What is your bank balance? Or you show them the bank statement or you tell them, well, I got my salary, which is that and that, this much, and I got a bonus that much, and I got the ticket. And I, You don't have... But let people see. Like, do not put money in a place that you just want to save the money and do not want to show it to the people that Allah Almighty gave me this money. Allah Almighty gave me this wealth so I bought a new car. Allah Almighty gave me this wealth or favor, so I'm wearing a nice cloth, etc, etc. So by that, Alhamdulillah, we finished the wonderful surah, the wonderful chapter from the Quran, Surah Al-Duha, the chapter of the morning hour. 
And I ask Allah Almighty to give us the ability to follow these instructions of Allah Almighty. And inshallah ta'ala by the next episode we will see you with a new chapter. So stay tuned. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.